what's going on everybody in this video i want to show you how i got these three famous paintings from their normal but still beautiful but very static appearance to move in 3d space like this you see photo animations are usually made in after effects or some other software that is specifically designed for animation work those big tools might be a bit overwhelming but we're going to use photo motion because it will simplify everything so in this video i'm going to give you the gist of how these animations were made in photo motion but of course you can find proper step-by-step -step tutorials for each of them on a photo motion website so let's start with the first one the one and only Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci well funny thing is that it actually might be his self portrait but let's stick to the original we're gonna start in Photoshop we're gonna mask her out like this just to be able to fill in that space by using content aware fill then we're gonna jump into After Effects and we're gonna launch photo motion portrait we're gonna add that picture there then we're gonna set up that face like that gonna do some tweaks here and there and then we're gonna paint the remaining of that depth map to create something like this and then we animate that controller and this is our basic photo motion portrait animation and then we're gonna jump into photo motion parallax because there we can bring that depth even more by adding these people in front maybe adding some particles and adding that frame around her probably changing color a little bit to make those colors pop and this is our final result our next painting is The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Did you know that some people perceive these swirls as if they are really moving? There's a really cool video about this. I'll put a link in the description below. So as before, we're going to start in Photoshop just to crop that image a little bit because it has this black edge. And we're going to fill in these things here uh, with content aware fill. And then, of course, we're going to separate that into multiple layers. So we have four layers plus one that is called clean plate, which is going to be our background we're gonna take that put it into after effects and we're gonna use photo motion parallax for this one we're gonna add that picture here we're gonna add layer one two three and four and we can immediately move this controller zoom in zoom out and so on we can activate some particles and then perhaps we can add some glow then we can add some warp on the background that will allow us to animate that swirl just like this and the final thing we need to do is just crop it a little bit to get rid of those black borders on the sides so we're gonna do this resolution and this is our final result And the next picture is Wanderer Above the Sea of Oak. This is a painting painted by Caspar David Friedrich. Well, in fact, his reputation suffered quite a bit when Nazis connected his love for German landscapes with their slogans, even though he was already dead for about 100 years at that point. We're gonna start in Photoshop. We're gonna create a mask around him, just like this. And we're gonna separate again into multiple layers and use content aware fill as we go. So one, two, three. And we're gonna add some frames, some clouds and so on. By the way, you might be wondering if you really need to use Photoshop to do all of that work. Well, you don't. You can do a lot of that stuff in After Effects. I just prefer to use Photoshop because of its masking tools and even content aware feel is way faster than it is in After Effects. So it's just a personal preference, but it gives you ability to bring that PSD file from Photoshop directly into After Effects with all of those layers. So if there's some mask Masking issue, for example, you can go back to Photoshop, mask it there, save it, and it will be automatically updated in your final animation, which is kind of handy. Okay, we're gonna open Photo Motion Parallax. We're gonna add that background, layer one, two, three, and four, and then we can immediately move that controller, zoom in, zoom out. On layer number one, I'm gonna add some puppet points to be able to animate it as we go through that animation. I'm gonna add some additional clouds and so on. Then we're gonna add a color correction just to make it more dynamic then of course adding a little bit of depth of field and some vignetting probably just to again increase that contrast just a tiny little bit and this is the final result I think it looks absolutely stunning that's all for today, but as I said, we have full tutorials for each of them on the Photomotion website, so you can follow along as we go through each individual step. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, or leave a comment, let me know what you want to see, and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Until then, my fellow creatives.